the reason why I ask is I wonder what you think about these social networking companies. I think obviously, you know, that those people have seen a uh, a product that, in effect, the, the customer didn't see it himself until he until he signed on. So it, it, you, you got to admire. I mean, I admire Steve Jobs and people like that when they when they see something that the customer hasn't yet seen. Henry Ford did it with a car. You know, I mean, it's that's impressive. Do you get a sense, though, that these companies are driving a technology bubble, another one? Not necessarily a bubble. I'm, the, the public drives the bubble. The, 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 you know, if you got Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg, they, they go about doing their business very well every day. If, if people look at them and say, my, there must be a whole lot of other tulips around, you know, and therefore I'm going to buy any tulip that comes along. It's, pe it's people and greed that, that form bubbles. It's not the guy that really turns out the product. But do you think that that's what we're seeing in some of these valuations? I mean, Groupon at $20 billion, Twitter at $7 billion. Anytime you see companies that were worth nothing a few years ago become worth 50 or $100 billion, you are going to get people very excited about the fact that they can pick the next one. And, and, and you'll get brokers that promise them that they can tell them what they are, and, and you're going to get a lot of people that are disappointed. Mm. Not that easy to create a $100 billion company. No. I mean, have you born, ever been tempted? I mean, have you been, because I know you read through, you know, you love reading all this, you know, data, and you read through annual reports and also filings. Have you been tempted to read through any of the S-1s that these companies have filed? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, I asked a couple of them to send me S-1s. Which ones? Well, I, I asked a fellow that day. He said he sort of copying his company on Berkshire, so I said, well, send me the S-1. Maybe I'll ask for a royalty. <laughs> you mean he was looking at IPOing his company? They are, yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. Can you say which one? Or? I, I shouldn't quote okay. him. Okay. Yeah. But has there been anything? I mean, have you read the Groupon S1, for instance, or the Zynga S1? I mean, it, you know, I want to get your take on what yeah, you think. Yeah, I, I will. I will. Mm -hmm. And what would you look for in that? I just, I just find it interesting. I mean, these people have developed very interesting businesses and a lot of imagination and, and some scale. And no, I, 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 you know, I, I read, I, I read uh, S1s like other people read Playboy. That's <laughs> 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 what happens when you're 80. <laughs> Okay, and I'm looking at that chart right behind you. It does look as if equity futures have gone down, have tanked on this ugly, as you know, as Lizzie was describing, an ugly report. You can't describe it any other way. Warren, 18,000 jobs only. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? Well, uh, it, it means that uh, we're, <laughs> we're still a ways off from, you know, getting to be where we should be. But, you know... What was the unemployment? But you're an optimist, right? Oh, sure. What, 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 but, was the, but, what was the unemployment rate in February of 1950? You know, I don't know. All I know is I bought some stocks that have worked out very well subsequently. <laughs> I, it, it, it's obviously of enormous importance, you know, to the American economy over time. But we, we went through in the fall of 2008, you know, as, as cataclysmic a, a, a panic that spilled over and the financial panic spilled over into the economy, as you can imagine. That's why you had those minus 700,000 figures there for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't turn around in, in a week or a month or even a year. And, and uh, on the other hand, we are coming back. I can tell you that from our but businesses. Something, something like this, though, um, you know, Warren, makes it a lot harder when you're then talking about the debt debate, right? It makes it a lot harder when you're talking about President Obama being reelected when you see a jobs number like this. Well, it, it, he would not like the election to be held today. I'm sure of that. <laughs> but uh, uh, in, in, in terms of, you know, it, it's a long time between now and and and, and next November, and and uh, uh, it will depend really on when housing comes back. Okay. Right before this, I know you had thought maybe it might even come in a little bit more to the upside, though. I mean, nobody, no. and, and, and to everybody's credit, I mean, nobody, nobody had thought 18,000 that it would be this big of a miss. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to turn now, though, to Wall Street, because uh, this is part of the economic story and part of the job story, Warren, which is banks and regulation. Um, Simon Johnson, who's been on our program quite a bit, and I know a name that you mm -hmm. know very well, um, has said that too big to fail is still here, that these banks that we've got have only gotten bigger and that they're basically government-subsidized entities. Is he wrong? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that there's, there's a number of institutions that are too big to fail. And we're, we're, we may be seeing that with countries, that uh, we're, uh, we're certainly behaving, or Europe is behaving as if they've got a problem with too big to fail. <laughs> <laughs> and... Is Greece too big to fail? Well, that's what we're... we're right. Greece is certainly too big to fail from the standpoint of the Europeans if it's going to cause a lot, a lot of other people to fail. That, okay. it, it isn't, when people talk about too big to fail, what they're worried about is the next domino. Right. And, and, and will it tilt over other dominoes? Uh, and we decided in this country that Freddie and Fannie are too big to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there will be institutions 
that, uh, and they may be government related, that, that uh, where the, the feeling isn't so much that they're too big to fail, but that, that uh, it's too big to, they're too big to fail without toppling others and getting, getting a series of dominoes going, which was the problem that we well, had. What's the September. difference, though? Well, Is there a difference? Well, it, it, it's, it, if Lehman could have failed in a vacuum, Mm. Uh, it, it, that, that would have been one thing, but Lehman, we learned Lehman couldn't fail in a vacuum. Um, now we know, though, that um, you know, aside from uh, you know, the, with the regulation debate, you know, we've you know, we know that you've you know, quite admired, for instance, Lloyd Blankfein, who's who steered the bank through right. you know the crisis. Uh, what about Jamie Dimon? He steered the bank through the crisis pretty well. He's a fabulous banker, and he probably writes the best annual report. In America, and uh, I would advise everybody. I think he models it after you. No, no, no. He, he, he. I really, I mean, I, I grab his report when it comes in, and and my friends do too. Now he is, he is a very, very smart banker, running a very big bank. Have you thought about buying into it? No, we we own stock in Wells and USB and M and T, uh, and banking is not going to be as profitable in the in, in the future as, it, as it has been in the past. Now it can still be plenty profitable, but but uh, you make money in banks on assets, and you can have less. You now can have less assets in relation to capital. You can have less leverage, and because and, of these capital requirements. Yeah, and, and the, so the very nature of it is you'll earn less on capital than was the case a while back. But that you can still earn pretty good returns, perhaps. But on you capital. think that overall, for the health of the economy, these capital requirements are good. I think I think reducing leverage in the financial system was a good idea. We, we, uh, leverage causes a lot of problems, and and there's a great temptation. And when you have the federal government in effect backing your deposits, mm -hmm. so that people don't have any reason to exercise their own judgment as to whether your leverage is too high, you need some leverage requirements. But a lot of these banks, though, Warren, and you know, you are you know famous obviously for pro promoting value investing. I mean, a lot of these banks are trading below their book value. Um, there's got to be a bargain here or there. Well, I hope so. <laughs> we own a few of them. <laughs> uh, some of them, when they talk about book value, though, some of them, there's a difference between tangible book and 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 and, and uh, stated book. And you earn money on tangible book, uh, not a, not on intangible. I mean, there's, that's you, you can earn money on some intangibles, but basically, uh, there are fewer. There are a lot fewer. They're selling below tangible book than than are selling below their stated book. Okay. Well, Goldman, we know, is one that you did invest in. Um, you know, during this, we, well, you, we you had the preferred shares. We bought preferred shares, and we've got warrants left. They called our preferred. And uh, yesterday, you you also said that you know that you were going to exercise those warrants, like you said you would but in, in 2013. As long right? as the stock's above 115. <laughs> well, that's that was my question: yeah. is is would you exercise them any earlier if they did obviously fall below that? 115 strike price. Well, there would be no reason to exercise them at all if they're below 115 right. because okay, they have right. no value. Yes, but if that, yeah, right. but uh, no, the the answers were very, very likely. Well, well, we'll only exercise them if it's above 115. I would expect it. Would, okay. It's likely that it'll be above 115. We will exercise those war warrants very close to their expiration date. Okay. So, can we defer from that? Can, can we infer from that then that you expect that stock price to rise or at least? Again, as you say, stay above 115 there's, until 2013. Well, I think there's there's more chance that it will than it won't, but but stocks can do anything. <laughs> right, um, and the economy can do anything. Yeah, and they have. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting back to regulation, though, uh, Elizabeth Warren, a lot of controversy there about her being consumer finance chief. What is your what is your view on her? Well, I, she's made a lot of enemies, obviously, but but we we needed a lot of correction and, and I mean when you see what happened in the mortgage uh, issuance market of five years ago uh, a lot of things took place that shouldn't have taken place and mm -hmm. and and it's up it's, it's up to both the industry and the government to correct it I mean it's great if the industry does it by itself but it's clear that it's clear you need a policeman and uh, She's a pretty good policeman. <laughs> well, I mean, what what has she done so far that you think have you know has been? Well, I, I I I can't follow all the details of it, but mm -hmm. but the, the the main thing to do in the end, you want people to take out mortgages where it's appropriate for them to do it, and where they where they know what they're doing, what the paper they sign, and where they can handle the terms involved in the paper they sign. You'll always have people that lose jobs or their deaths or something, so you'll have some foreclosures. But you should not have masses of people entering into transactions that they don't fully understand. Right. Uh, it's such an important transaction in their life. I mean, it's, it's huge. So 
that there's a real job to be done in making sure that people both understand the contract they're getting into and can handle the contract under most circumstances. Mm. Um, well, aside from Elizabeth Warren, Tim Geithner, you know, obviously, you know, is part of Obama's economic team. There was some news out last week that he was possibly going to step down. And I he hope said, he doesn't. I think he's terrific. <laughs> well, I was going to say, would it be a big blow if he did? Well, it would depend on who succeeded him on a number of things. But Tim, Tim Geithner, you know, I mean, it, it, we are very, very fortunate that Tim Geithner has, has been there during this period. You've often been talked about that if there was an ideal candidate to replace to replace him or to be Treasury Secretary, you would be. No. Would you ever do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's a thankless job. and I've, I've got an easy job now. Why would I trade? <laughs> What I talk okay. about first, though, is the person that's left Berkshire, uh -huh. David Sokol. It's been a few months since the annual meeting when you right. when you pretty much laid out what happened. Um, what's happened since? Have you talked to David since? I talked to him twice since the press release. Once he was on uh, CNBC the next day, and I talked to him that day for a minute or two, and then about a week later for a minute or two, and that's been it. And that's been it. Yeah. Okay. Um, have there been any, any more inquiries from the SEC? Well, there was an initial inquiry that was labeled informal and, and voluntary, and and pursuant to that, I talked to them one time, and it was not a deposition or anything of the sort. But but uh, uh, and it was labeled informal and and and, and uh, voluntary, and and I was glad to talk to them. And was it the end of that? That was the end of it. That's, that was yeah, that was the end of it. Yeah. Have you looked further into some of Sokol's other interests within Berkshire, like at Mid American or BYD? Uh, we haven't. We don't. Uh, I mean, our audit committee uh, looked to the extent they could, but but obviously we don't have any subpoena power or anything like that. So the, uh, presumably that may get looked at by by somebody else, but but uh, but we don't have that authority actually to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, David Sokol held a special role in some ways at Berkshire. You know, he was somebody that you deployed sometimes when you were looking at deals. I mean, he was the one that he did, helped. He did a terrific job. And, and, and he helped put together, um, you know, the deal at, yeah, at BYD, for instance. Um, do you have anybody now in that sort of role, or do you need anybody now in that sort of role? Well, it's not exactly that role, but we, we've got we've got managers that, that uh, we've got a group of managers that, I feel like I've got the 1927 New York Yankees. You may not be familiar with them, but uh, <laughs> Ruth and Gary and a few people. I think I get the idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I. You know, we have a we have an we have a an abundance of of riches in terms of of, of managers and and. Uh, uh, but well, Dave was Dave was a very good manager. Mm. Well, Howard was mentioning a few names. I mean, Matt Rose is one, for instance. He's a terrific manager. I mean, is he somebody that you might consider, you know, putting into other, you know, into different types of roles besides? He's, he's doing pretty well where he is, but he could handle a lot of other things. There's no question about that. But but he runs a very big business now and does it. He couldn't do it better. Uh, what about Todd Combs? Has he he's, has he started buying stocks? He's, he's bought just two stocks so far. Which ones? <laughs> Can't say. I like the way you slide into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, MasterCard is one that, that we've been hearing about. Is that true? Well, I, th I think it showed up on a record that MasterCard was bought. And I'll put it this way. I didn't buy it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> message. Got the message yeah. on that. Huge breakthrough. <laughs> now, going forward, though, when he's buying stocks, does he have, does he have to clear them with you? No. How's the process going? No. 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 We have a, a, a little bit of clearance in the sense that there's a few things he couldn't buy. I mean, uh, uh, just because it would be awkward. I mean, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have anybody buy a Microsoft because I'm so close to Bill that people okay. would assume I was getting inside information. So, so there's a, just a few little items like that. But, but no, he can, he can be buying stocks as we talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, and do you have any particular goals for him by the end of the year? Does he have any particular goals by the end of the year? Well, he he, ta he he's designated a block of money, which he designated, and he can increase or decrease that block at, okay. his, at, at, uh, at his call. Okay. Warren, I'm so sad to say that we have to leave it here, but thank you so much. I know you've got a breakfast to go to. Yeah. <laughs> so very much thanks to Warren Bevin here for staying with me uh, throughout the job.